Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy in May Time with Edgar Barrier. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. At every opening night in the theater for a thousand years, there's been a breathless feeling of expectancy, a sense of new adventure. And tonight, as the lights go on again in our Lux Radio Theater, there's the added thrill of knowing that the lights are going on again all over the world. With the liberation of France, the torch of freedom burns again in Europe. And tonight, we have a play that expresses something of the bond between song-loving America and music-loving Paris. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's screen hit, Maytime, with Sigmund Romberg's unforgettable music. And for our stars, those all-American favorites, Jeanette MacDonald and Nelson Eddy. They made their first appearance for us in a radio play together just last June. Your many letters, which have asked us to bring them together again, are answered in tonight's premiere with Maytime. We hope you'll continue to have a real part in all of our Monday night performances, not just by purchasing Lux Toilet Soap, because I, I think you'd do that anyway in recognition of a truly fine product, but by helping us select the plays and stars you want most to hear. For our 10th anniversary on October 16th, we'll particularly welcome your suggestions. Just send me a postcard telling me the name of the play or stars you'd like to hear. Mail it to me at Post Office Box 9, Hollywood 8, California. And now, the thrill of another opening night, as the curtain goes up on the first act of Maytime, starring Jeanette MacDonald as both the old and the young Marsha, and Nelson Eddy as Paul, with Edgar Barrier as Nazaroff. <laughs> You probably never heard of the little town of Shelby. It's in Virginia, on the broad shelves of the Shenandoah Mountains. Old Miss Morrison lived there in a fine white house, just across from the park. Shelby never saw much of old Miss Morrison, and most of the year they'd forget about her, but never in the spring. For on the first day of May every year, she'd see that there was a wonderful fair in the park, a May Day fair. This year she couldn't go, because she'd been pretty sick. She just sat in her chair on the lawn under the big elm and watched the folks enjoy themselves. She was there when one of the boys passed by. He was home on leave, a private in the army. His name was Kip. Miss Morrison? Say, why aren't you there at the fair? The doctor won't let me, Kip. But why aren't you there with Barbara? Well, I guess Barbara and I are just about ready to bust up, Miss Morrison. I thought I'd stop in next door and say goodbye to her, though. Oh, what's wrong, Kip? Oh, that singing business. If she went to New York, they all told her she could be an opera star in six or seven years. She has a wonderful voice, Kip. But you don't want her to go, hmm? No, I don't. Not if it means what I know it's bound to mean. I had some terrific plans for Barbara and me, like, like getting married and everything. And if she goes to New York, well, I'll never see her again. Don't worry too much about it, Kip. It'll all work out. <laughs> Who are you kidding, Miss Morrison? You'll see. You'll see. Well... Sorry to be such a sourpuss. Goodbye. Goodbye, Kip. Miss Marsha? Oh, yes, Ellen. You feel all right, Miss Marsha? Oh, yes. This is the first May Day I've missed, Ellen. I'm glad the doctor's keeping you home, especially today. Because it's May Day. Yes. Well, sometimes May Day seems almost the same as any other day now. It's been so long. So many years. But I'll leave you alone, Miss Marsha. You call if you need anything. Yes, yes, yes. It's been so long. So many years. Paul. Paul. I don't have to do. Go ahead. Go to New York. Be a big shot. See how far it gets you. And what if 
about you. I've been telling you one about me. I'm through. And I'm through, too. Okay, that's fine. Goodbye. Tip. Barbara. Oh, Miss Morrison. I didn't want to hear, child, but I couldn't help it. But I was right, wasn't I? He won't even try to understand. Perhaps it's because he's in love with you, Barbara. Oh, if he loved me, then he'd want me to have that chance. A chance to be a great singer like, like Jenny Lind was, or, or Tetrazzini, or, or Marsha Monet. Marsha Monet? No. No, not like her. Why do you say that? Because... Because I was Marsha Monet. Marsha Monet? You, Miss Morrison? Yes. It was many, many years ago. In Paris. I had three dreams, Barbara. To star in the Paris Opera. To have an opera written especially for me by Baliano. And to sing at a command performance in the President's Palace. And all my dreams came true. What thrilled me most, I think, was that wonderful night I sang before President Carmo. <laughs> The leading soprano of the Opera de Paris, Mademoiselle Marcia Monet. Nous venions de voir le torrent, trois garçons, trois filles. La vie nous fait rêver. to the president, much too stiff. Oh, I know, but what's the aria? You sang very well, Marsha. Oh. Marsha, come with me. Out here to the garden. But, but an encore. Later, perhaps, if the president wishes. And if we wish. This way, my dear. You are happy, Marsha? Happy? Oh, how can you speak so calmly when you know I'm, I, I'm bursting? Let's sit down, my dear. Do you know what tonight means? My share of the work is over. As your teacher, there's nothing more I can do. Nikolai. You've worked very hard. 
You deserve everything. All I know is that whatever I am, I owe to you. If there's any way I can repay you... There is. Oh, poor Marcia. I'm asking a very high price. I want to marry you. Nicolas. I love you, Marcia, so much that the thought of losing you is the thought of death. Marcia, tell me. Tell me. I should be very happy to marry you, Nikolai. Oh, darling. Darling. Nikolai took me home, but I couldn't sleep. My head whirled, and I longed for the calm of the soft spring night. I called a carriage. The air was like champagne, and like champagne it put me to sleep. But a few moments later, I had a sudden awakening. Tabby's horse had broken the harness and run away. Oh, please do not be angry, Mademoiselle. I'd find Eloise and bring her right back. And what would you suggest I do? If you would please wait, Mademoiselle, there is a cafe there across the street. Oh, very well, but please hurry. Oh, I am an antelope, Mademoiselle. I am an antelope. I slipped quietly into the cafe. No one noticed me at first. It was someone's party. And the wine was gaily mixed with music and singing. When you see, come, we see it again. Sing and sing like that again and we'll wake up in jail. Oh, oh, oh and there's a great baritone. Any suggestions? Certainly. I'll sing alone. No assistance, oh, please. Oh, no, no, ah. no, not again. Help, help. Ingrates, who paid for this supper? Oh, you did. I did, and that gives me certain privileges. I can kiss any girl, insult any man, or sing any song. And looking this rabble over, the only cause worth my attention is music. So, I'll sing again. Capitalist, tyrant! Jack, music! Paul, what, what number? Oh, something sad. Something full of tears. Let me see a bit. Uh oh we have company. Look there by the door. Well, mademoiselle, greetings. You're a little late, aren't you? I'm sorry. I'll see. Oh, no, 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 no. We'll talk about you in a minute. First, let's welcome you with music. Paul, what number? The ballad, stupid. The ballad. No. No ballad. Le Régiment de Sombre Meurs. Hmm? Sombre Meurs. On your feet, Frenchman. Here's your country song. On your feet. <laughs> Ses pieds en bas de la Gaule, elle est sans trêve, c'est son repos. Avec leur fusil sur l'épaule, courage au cœur et quatre ans. La gloire était leur nourriture, ils étaient sans pain, sans souillés. La nuit, ils poussaient sur la dure avec leur sac au Marchez toujours au cri de liberté Cherchons la route glorieuse Qui l'a conduit à l'immortalité Now, mademoiselle, we shall talk. Thank you. That's a wonderful song. But why did you choose it instead of a ballad? Well, to be perfectly honest, so you'd have to stand up. Oh? And I could get a much better look at you. Are all Frenchmen so frank? <laughs> I don't know. I'm an American. Oh, that explains it. So am I. Say that again. You're what? American. Oh, don't you realize, don't you realize what this means? I've been starved, starved for the sound of one good, healthy American voice, and then suddenly you come into my life. Not only an American voice, but an American girl, and not only an American girl, but a beautiful, glorious, radiant, indescribable vision of perfected loveliness. Shake. Did anyone ever tell you that before? <laughs> not all at once, no. Well, I'll get my breath back and tell you again. You're the most beautiful, gorgeous, sparkling, no, radiant... Father, I have a good memory. Who are you? Will you be in Paris long? Can I see you tomorrow? No. No? I'm afraid not. Why not? I'll be working. Oh, then, then tomorrow night. 
But tomorrow night, I'm going to the opera. I see. Well, the least you can do is have some supper with me now. No, I can't do that either. I've already had supper. Well, as lavish as this, sausage, omelet, cheese. Oh, yes. President Carno is something of a gourmet. President Carno... Mademoiselle. I've seen you before, haven't I? Yeah, the, the, the posters. The posters in front of the opera house. You're observant. I'm observant. And you're... You're Marcia Marnay. Yes. You think I'm drunk? Of course not. Well, I have had a sip of wine. I've had a couple of bottles. And you have? Well, very light wine. It, it hasn't affected me, really, but I, I'm glad I had two bottles. Because if I hadn't, I wouldn't dare talk to you the way I'm talking now. How are you talking now? Like a man in love. Like a slave, a worshiper. Oh, but you must be accustomed to that. So? So won't you have supper with me tomorrow night after the opera? I can't. Well, then lunch. You could have lunch with me. You can't shake your head at that, too. But I can, and I do. Oh, you just don't like me, hmm? But I like you very much. And your voice, too. You do? Mm-hmm. Mademoiselle, I have caught her Eloise, her little fleas over. Oh, thank you. Good night. Good night, who? I don't know. My name is Allison. Paul Allison. You have to leave? Of course. But then I'll go with you. You were saying you like my voice. Yes, I also said I like you. But I'd like you lots better if you stayed in the cafe and let me go home. Well, then tell me when I can see you. Never. I can't see you again. We can have lunch tomorrow. I live right upstairs there, see? Fourth floor. Driver, Rue Latour, number 17. Eloise, dear, you heard the lady. <laughs> and I have a ham. All the way from home. A Virginia ham. Goodbye, Mr. Allison. But, but, but what about my ham and my broken heart? You'll have a broken leg if you don't let go of the carriage. Oh, I'll be careful, and I have tremendous endurance, Miss Monet. That I can see. Oh, please let go. Not until you promise to come to lunch. Driver, hurry, hurry. Ham, Miss Monet. Virginia ham. But it's impossible. Oh, look out. You're going to fall. I have fallen. Shall we say one o'clock? Oh, Mr. Allison, I may get into terrible trouble through all this. Then you come. Will you let go? The second you promise me. All right, I promise. I'll be there. You will? I'll up and out. Good night. She'll be there. Everybody, wake up, wake up. Listen, she'll be there. She's coming. In a few minutes, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy, will return in Act Two of Maytime. And now, a late summer garden, a pretty girl, and a soldier. Your mother said I'd find you out here, Betty. I guess maybe I'm a little oh, early. Oh, hello, Jim. No, you're not a bit too early. I was just cutting a few roses for the dinner table. Gosh, you really have some beauties there. Aren't they gorgeous? We're so proud of our roses this year. Oh, Jim, look at this one. Such a delicate, exquisite shade. Did you ever see such coloring? I guess I have. I know I have. I'm looking at you. Right at you, Betty. Girls with lovely Lux complexions do get compliments like that. For there's something about fresh flower-like skin that seems to inspire pretty speeches. Screen stars say no other feminine charm is more important. Lovely Rita Hayworth tells you... A Lux girl? Indeed I am. Here's my daily active lather facial. I cover my face generously with Lux Soap's creamy lather, work it in gently but thoroughly. Then I rinse with warm water, splash with cold, and pat dry with a soft towel. This Lux Soap care really makes skin lovelier, leaves it feeling so soft and smooth. In recent tests of Lux Toilet Soap facials, actually three out of four complexions improved in a short time. Women everywhere are discovering that gentle white Lux Toilet Soap is a real beauty soap. If you haven't tried it, see what its creamy, abundant lather can do to make your skin lovelier. Ask for Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow. If your dealer is out of stock due to wartime conditions, he's sure to have more soon. Hollywood's beauty soap is worth waiting for. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act Two of Maytime, starring Jeanette MacDonald as Marsha and Nelson Eddy as Paul, with Edgar Barrier as Nazaroff. It's again the present time, and Marsha Mornay, the glorious singer of another century, becomes old Miss Morrison again. As she continues her story... Barbara, the pretty girl from next door, listens in silence while a love affair is reborn after 50 years of memories. Eloise did not run away again that night. We clattered down the cobble streets and I thought out of the life of Paul Allison forever. In front of my apartment, I found I had come without my purse. I left the cabbie in the hall and hurried to my Ellen, 
I'm back. I need some money. I told Ellen to go to bed, Marsha. Nikolai. I came back, as you can see. Our opera, Bagliano Score, I left it here. You found it? Yes. But not you. I'm sorry, Nikolai. I've been foolish. Forgive me. Where have you been? I went for a drive. With whom? With no one. With whom? Oh, Nikolai. Oh, please understand. I was, I was so excited, so happy, I, I couldn't sleep. I intended to drive only a little while, but, but the horse broke loose and I had to wait until the driver caught him. Marsha. The driver's in the hall. I didn't pay him. Ask him, Nikolai. Marsha. Oh, forgive me, Marsha. It's just that I love you so much. I... You mustn't talk like that. You had every right to be angry. I had no right whatsoever. Now I'll go and settle with the cabby. Good night, my darling. Good night, Nikolai. <laughs> Paul, come on, come on, open her up, open her up. Patino? My sure, Patino, come on. All right, here I am, where was you? Sorry, Patino. Oh, you sorry? My dear maestro, you say quarter past twelve, you kindly meet me, Catherine, we have lunch, we discuss some new areas, yes? Yep. You know what time is it now? Twenty minutes past one. I had to break the date. Had to break the date. What's all about, huh? Look at you. You best to close your rooms or clean up a span and a speak. Yeah, a span and a speak. English is the way I talk. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. quarter past twelve or twenty minutes past one and I'm a kid. I la, 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 met a lady. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> that's a different. She said she'd have lunch with me here at one o'clock. Marcia Mornay. Hey, Marcia Marcia Mornay? La cantatrice? So I cleaned up the place, went to the barber, put on the best clothes... And then it dawned on me. I'm the biggest fool in Paris. Oh, she promised to come, but she had to promise I wouldn't let go of a carriage. But I believed her. I thought she meant it. Uh A nicer girl, huh? Nice. Patino, she's... Well, she's... She's the... She she is, uh uh-huh. Well, uh, come on. Fill up with the stomach and light up with the heart. How can I eat? Go ahead. It's on the table, my beautiful Virginia ham. Mm Mm-hmm. Smells pretty good. And speaking of smells, come on, singer. We do some practicing. No, no, no not, not now. Tonight, maybe. Tonight, maybe. Listen, now I get mad. I say you practice. Well, all right, but but no opera. Something light, something easy. All the time, easy, easy, easy. If Marcia Monet was here, you would sing her a pretty song, you know? My, all you got for company is a beautiful Virginia ham. So you sing it to her. Come on, carry my back to all Virginia. <laughs> you talk too much, Patino. Carry me back. With the feeling from the heart to the heart. <sighs> All right, we start again. Mm. Carry me back to all Virginia. That's where the cotton and the corn and seed is grown. Marcia, it is you. You. You're here. I heard singing. Your door was open, so I walked in. Oh, well, 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 sit down. This is a chair. Oh, oh Patino. Mademoiselle, si- Signor Patino, my maestro. We were just... Oh, Mademoiselle, to... I can only say what a privilege. I didn't mean to interrupt anything. Interrupt? Wait, wait, Mademoiselle. Would you, would you do it, please? Do what? Well, you, you started to sing. Would you with the Paul? Would you sing with the Paul now? Oh, such an honor, Mademoiselle. I'd like to sing with Paul. Oh, Mademoiselle. Oh. Oh.
friends of Mademoiselle Watson experience. Tell the truth, Patino. All you really like is opera. You know, he wants to make an opera singer out of me, sell me into slavery. I want to put him where he belongs. Ma, will he work? No. No ambition, no application. Mademoiselle, please say something to make him work, please. Oh, Patino, I, I'm sorry to have kept you so long. I know you have to go now. All, all those other pupils waiting. <laughs> I got it plenty of times. <laughs> That's just what I thought, so rush off. Goodbye, Patino. My Paul, listen, I... Uh, goodbye. I, 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 all right, I go. Goodbye, mademoiselle. Goodbye, loafer. So we're alone, hmm? That's uh, what I had in mind. Well, you're going to be still more alone. I have to leave, too. Leave? You said you'd have lunch. I only came here because last night I made a promise. And I don't like to break promises. Goodbye, Paul. Oh, please. I have everything ready. Virginia Ham from Virginia... For me? Of course. Eggs, too. Ham and eggs, and, and it's all ready. Take me two minutes. Oh, even less if I fry the eggs. Then you'll stay? Well, I don't know whether it's you or the ham, but I'll stay. Oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> you know? What? <laughs> You're wonderful. Well, your dishes are dried, Mr. Allison. Makes you kind of homesick, doesn't it, that, that song, Virginia? I don't have time to get homesick. You'd like to go back to the States sometime, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, sometime. Well, I'll tell them about you when I get back. Oh, but you mustn't. I mean, with a voice like yours, you really should stay here and... Oh, look, the clock. It's nearly three o'clock. You can't go yet. Oh, but I must, Paul. Goodbye. And promise me something. Anything. Don't ask to see me again, ever. But why? I can't explain... It's been wonderful meeting you, but it's all over. Finished. And now I... Really... You're, you're singing tonight? The opera? Yes. I could see you there. Well, then just be sure you stay in the audience. Au revoir, Marcia. Goodbye. Goodbye, Paul. Mademoiselle, never. Thank you. Oh, Miss Marshall. Oh, yes, Ellen. Mr. Nazaroff asks, can you receive the critics in three minutes? If he wishes. I'll be right in here in my dressing room. Thank you, Miss. Hello. Paul, how did you get in here? Walked in. Oh, then get out, please. If you don't, I'll have to call someone. Tomorrow is May Day. There's a fair not far from Paris. It's saint Cloud. May I take you? No. Please. <laughs> You're a girl who has to be persuaded. I found that out last night in front of the cafe. This is entirely different. You simply can't be found here. I'll go if you come to saint Cloud tomorrow. I can't. I don't want to. Oh, won't anything make you leave? Mm-hmm. What? Come to saint Cloud. The critics, Miss and Mr. 
with you, not at all. Oh, just a minute. Paul, get out. Then you'll come with me? Yes, yes, anything. I'll call for you at ten. Now, where do you want oh, to Oh, for heaven's sake, don't try to call for me. I- I- I'll meet you there. Ten o'clock? Yes, any time. Ten o'clock, yes. Only go. Yes. Oh, certainly. If you'll wait a moment, monsieur, I'll see if... Oh, pardon me, please. Excuse me, monsieur. Not at all. I'm afraid I was in your way. Who was the visitor, Marsha? Oh, no one troublesome. But I, I wish they'd be more careful about letting strangers come backstage. Oh, Marsha, the critics are scratching at the door. Shall I let them in? Well, I... And remember, darling, these critics are the people who count in your life from now on. They fill the orchestra seats for us. Young men who come backstage fill only the gallery. Yes. Send the critics in. Why, you're here. You did come. On time, too. Oh, but from the way you talked last night. Oh, how can I thank you? By not reminding me that I'm doing something I have no right to do. Then forget who you are and what you are and everything else. Agreed? Oh, yes. It's May Day. The sun's shining. The hills are beautiful. Oh, look. Jugglers and May dancers and... Tightrope walkers and Punch and Judy. Music and gypsies and all sorts. Paul, it's so beautiful. I, I could cry. Well, that's the one thing you'll not do today. Come on, now. First, our fortunes from the gypsies. So we'll know just how to conduct ourselves, right? Wonderful. Happy? So happy. Good. (laughs) Me too. Oh, Oh, let's sit down. I'm tired. Just, Just ten more steps. You see? A brook, a bridge, a tree. And down there, in between the hills, there it is. The fair and all the people. Now, wasn't it worth the walk? Oh, Paul, it's beautiful. But while I'm looking at this, I know that in four hours I'll have to be back on the stage in Paris. By tomorrow, this will all be as though it had never happened. You want to forget it? No. Well, songs make memories, and there are lots of songs about May Day. Sing them to me, all of them. <laughs> if I did, you wouldn't be back in four hours. Then the one you like best. Sing that one. Well, that one, but it's about more things than May Day. I know. It's about sweethearts and remembrance and what's in my heart at this moment and what's in yours. Oh, you know it? The song? Oh, I know it so well. But not the words, not the music. Sing it for me, Paul. Please. Oh, love is so sweet in the springtime When blossoms are fragrant in May years that are coming can bring time to make me forget this day. I love you in life's gray December, the same as I love you. Someone else? The one they say you're seen with so much? Nazareth? 
Yes. You love him? I'm going to marry him. Oh, Paul. Paul, now you understand, don't you? Why I have no right to be here. I knew it was wrong, but I wanted to be with you. So much that I... Do you love him? Everything I am, I owe to him. Mm. Even being here today, meeting you the other night. He made all those things possible for me, all of them. But if you talk to him, if I talk to him... Oh, no. Nikolai has never failed me. And I can't fail him now. Even for something I want far more. I've met you too late. No, I can't believe it. Paul, please, let's just remember this day. One day to last us all the rest of our lives? It will. It will. I'll always love you, Marcia. And I'll always remember you and your son. Sweet heart, sweet heart, sweet heart, oh, how oh, I trust and wonder, I will For station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a few moments, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy, will bring us Act Three of Maytime. And now, I see our young friend Sally before me. Mr. Kennedy, I've got a new game. And I have a premonition, Sally. You want to show me how to play it. It's fun, Mr. Kennedy. It's called cliché. And here's all there is to it. Cliché? You know, often used familiar expressions that everyone recognizes. We each have to think of some. Let's try comparisons first. Like green as grass or warm as toast. Now you think of some. Uh, Fresh as a daisy, bright as a button. That's it. Now it's my turn. White as snow, brown as a berry. Smooth as silk, fair as a flower. Soft as satin, smooth as cream. Fresh as a breeze, pretty as a picture. Say, how's this one, Sally? Lovely as a luxe complexion. Of course, lovely as a luxe complexion. Why, that's a comparison everyone's familiar with. Especially right here in Hollywood. Where there are so many lovely luxe complexions. You know, Sally, when nine out of ten famous stars use Lux toilet soap regularly, why, it just has to be good. It has to be a real beauty soap, Mr. Kennedy, and it is. Any woman who uses Lux toilet soap every day for a while will find that out for herself. She'll discover that Lux soap's rich, creamy lather helps skin to be softer, smoother, truly lovelier. And any woman who hasn't tried this fine white soap owes it to herself to do so. Why not let the velvety rich lather give your skin gentle, cherishing care every day? You'll find Lux Toilet Soap is right for delicate skin. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. After the play, we'll meet our stars for a brief informal chat. But now, here's the curtain for Act Three of Maytime, starring Jeanette MacDonald as Marsha and Nelson Eddy as Paul, with Edgar Barria as Nazaroff. Twilight is falling over the little Virginia town as old Miss Morrison leads Barbara down a highway of memories into the times and places of her past, her weary heart unfolding secrets never told before. And so Paul Allison went out of my life. I married Nikolai. My career flourished. Over five years passed. I heard nothing from Paul, nothing about him. And then Nikol- Nikolai said it was time to leave Europe and return to New York, return to home. There was a great reception the day we arrived and later in our hotel. Oh, Marsha, the directors from the opera will be here any minute, but you won't have to see them. I'll tend to everything. You're tired, aren't you? 
Very. But glad to be back in America? Oh, yes. You don't exactly show it. Oh, I guess I don't. I'm just not awfully excited about anything. Oh, come here, my dear. I love you so very much. I... I'm sorry, Marsha. I should have remembered that my kissing you excites you less than anything else. Nikolai, why do you say things like that? I don't know. You've been the perfect wife, Marsha. And yet never once in all the years we've been married have I ever felt that I've completely possessed you. You've no right to feel like that. I know. All I regret is it's made me love you too much. Excuse me. Oh, yes. The gentleman from the opera here, monsieur. Oh, have them come in, Ellen. I'll be in my room. Don't worry about me, Nikolai. Contracts are all very satisfactory, monsieur, save for one thing. One thing? Huh? You have indicated that we open with Traviata. Mm, a yes, beautiful yes, opera, yes, monsieur. Yes. Worthy of Madame Monet's extraordinary talent. We'll be delighted to know the opening night already is sold out. The fact remains you have gone to great trouble to prepare an opera that Madame Monet has no intention of appearing in. Mm, not Traviata. Not Traviata. Monsieur, the opera will be Zaritza. Oh, but Zaritza. It was composed by Bagliano especially for Madame Mornay. Now, what could be more perfect? But Zaritza needs a baritone. We've none important enough. Well, that's not completely accurate, all this. There's Paul Allison. Oh, yes. I've never met Allison, but I've heard him spoken of to his credit. Yes, Madame Mornay will be quite satisfied to have Allison sing with her. But he's not well enough known. Monsieur, the public comes to hear Madame Mornay. I assume our wishes will be respected. And so there's nothing further to discuss. Thank you, monsieur. We shall see you Tuesday at rehearsal. Well, really oh, Marsha. Yes? Everything is arranged. Zaritza. Four weeks rehearsal starting Tuesday. Oh? And who do they have to sing Petrov? Paul Allison. Paul... Uh, Nikolai, couldn't they get someone, well, better known? Why? I understand he has a very adequate voice. Now try to get some sleep. Oh, we're having dinner with the French consul. I'll call you in plenty of time. Prima donnas. I hate all prima donnas. No, 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 no. Take it easy, Alex. You'll be here. Where's your patience? Patience. Our first rehearsal, and already she's a half hour late. The great Madame Mornay. Drown all prima donnas, I say drown them. Look, they're coming in now. Madame Mornay and her husband. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the cast, your attention, attention, please. I enjoy a great privilege. May I introduce Madame Mornay and Monsieur Nazaroff. Oh. Thank you. I hope we shall all be good friends. Thank you, thank you. Madame, permit me, our baritone, Mr. Paul Allison. How do you do? How do you do? It's an honor to sing with you, madame. Thank you very much. Monsieur Nazaroff, Mr. Allison. Monsieur Nazaroff? Monsieur. Wait, wait. But not forget the Patino. Oh, madame, you remember Patino, no? Me, Patino. Oh, yes. Of course I remember. Oh, madame, all these years I've been saying little prayers for you. You gave Paul everything. Ambition, application... Oh, it's been such a long time since that day in Paris, Excuse madame. Excuse me, uh, Monsieur Nazaroff, my maestro, Signor Patino. When I was a student in Paris, monsieur, several years ago, madame was generous enough to encourage me in my career. Oh, not only that, my Mr. Rudyard, we're ready any time you wish to start the rehearsal. Yes, yes. Uh, quiet, please. Your attention, ladies and gentlemen. Chorus, as we arrange the rest of the... I'll be in the wings, Marsh. Uh, me too. Oh, I'm so glad it is, Zarita. You see the chance Paul has been waiting for. So? Perhaps you're right. I saw Paul at rehearsals almost every day for the next four weeks. And not a word passed between us except as one performer to another. But his eyes held me and frightened me. Then came the opening of Zaritza. It was thrilling beyond any premiere I had ever known. But as Paul and I were on stage for our final duet, his arms around me, I knew we would never sing Zarista again. Je donne ma vie à un peuple vivra, la vie se gagne au prix de la mort. J'entends le tambour et j'ai fait mon devoir, je fais mourir mon âme et ton père. Je crois que je peux te voir cruel de te condamner ta mort. Je crois que je te parle, tu as mérité ton corps. Oh, 
going back to him. I'll take you away tonight. Paul, let me speak to him first, please. If you wish. I'll send Ellen to you in the morning with a message. I told you at the opera house that I wish to talk to you, Marsha. And I asked you to wait until we were back at the hotel. Well, we are back, Nikolai. Yes. You know, you surpassed even yourself tonight. The critics are referring to your performance as a living emotion. Look at me, Marsha. There's a great deal that you never thought important enough even to mention to me, isn't there? Or too important. Yes, Nikolai. Something that has stood between us for five years. I know what it is now. Who it is. And I'm the one who brought you two together again. Now, suppose we find out exactly how we stand. Nothing could have stopped this happening, Nikolai. I tried to forget Paul. I never could. I know now that I can't go on without him. You wish to be set free. Is that it? Yes. Yes. Very well. I won't stand in your way. Good night, Marsh. About ten minutes later, I heard a heavy door close. I called to Nikolai, but there was no answer. I went to his room. He was gone, and on his table was a leather gun case. The case was open, and the gun was gone. And next to it was a slip of paper. Paul Allison's address. I rushed into the street shouting for a cab. Oh, but Monsieur Nazaroff, I... Well, come in, please. I had no chance at the opera to congratulate you upon your performance. Well, thank you. Forgive me, but uh, surely you didn't come here just to tell me that? no. My purpose requires no conversation at all. Sit down. I, I don't know quite what to say, except, except that I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you know. You do know, don't you? Marcia has told you. She's told me. We can talk then like reasonable people. There is nothing to discuss. I'm giving Marcia her freedom. And you yours. Goodbye, Marsha. Marsha. Darling. Darling. That, that day did last me all my life. Paul. You won't be lonely. Please. No. I'll always be close. Always. No. No. <laughs> After Paul 
Joel died, I came here where no one knows me except Ellen. And now you, Barbara. Oh, Miss Morrison. I told you all this only to help you decide about Kip. I found Paul too late. But you and Kip had the whole world ahead of you to share if you want to take it. Oh, I do, I do. Then run along and find him and tell him so. How can I? I want to thank you, but I don't know how. Just come and see me once in a while. You and Kip. Goodbye, Miss Morrison. Goodbye, child. It's getting chilly, Miss Marsha. Don't you want to come in? Miss Marsha, are you asleep? Come now, wake up. We'll go inside and... <gasps> Miss Marsha. Oh, Miss Marsha. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'd always be close to you. Come, darling. Come. It's May Day, dearest. Remember. And it always will be May Day, darling. From now on. Always. Sweet performance certainly puts us on our mettle for the rest of the season, trying to live up to it. For that inspiring challenge, we can thank Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy. Well, you've sort of put me on the spot, too, CB. Well, certainly you aren't worried about your new radio show, Nelson. It's one of the most promising events of the season. Yeah, but in, in tonight's introduction, CB, you expressed the hope that the lights were going on again all over the world. <laughs> well, how does that put you on the spot? Well, you see, my sponsors are 160 leading electric light and power companies. <laughs> well, I, I, I think you'll shine in your own right, Nelson. Jeanette, I have a clipping from a New York paper calling you Hollywood's beauteous contribution to Grand Opera. Well, the Grand Opera part is right, C.B. In, uh, in November, I'm singing Romeo and Juliet and Faust with the Chicago Civic Opera Company. And then my concerts... And then in January, I start rehearsals for my new operetta in New York. Mm, I understand it's a hitherto unpublished work by Victor Herbert. Mm-hmm. That's what makes it so exciting. Well, I hope these, these separate paths that you and Nelson are following won't keep you from making a picture together before too long. Oh, we'd like to make a picture, C.B., wouldn't we, Jeanette? You bet we would. If we could find a story, we'd do justice to. You know, Jeanette, while I hate to say this in front of Nelson, I've always thought that, that you and I should do a musical together. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> do you uh, do you sing, CB? Do I sing? <laughs> hmm, well, you ought to hear me in the bathtub with a cake of Lux toilet soap. <laughs> well, I I can't say I've found Lux toilet soap has helped my singing, CB, but it certainly is a wonderful complexion care. I wouldn't be without it. <laughs> what I really meant was, <laughs> you could do the singing and I could do the producing. Yeah, and I could hold a cake of soap. <laughs> 
Well, you may have an idea there, but right now, Phoebe, I think we'd all like to hear about your play for next week. Well, for our, for our Lux Radio Theatre play next Monday night, we have the RKO screen hit, Break of Hearts. And our stars will be Rita Hayworth and Orson Welles. It's the moving and romantic story of a sensitive musician and his beautiful wife, whose temperamental natures make their romance one of touch and go, until love brings them into a final understanding. Sounds like a full house at the Lux Radio Theater, CB. Good night. Good Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Ah, thanks to you both for a thrilling evening. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, and we of the Lux Radio Theater, want all of you to have a real part in our 10th anniversary celebration on October 16th. So help us select the play and the stars that you'd like most to hear. Send your suggestions to me on a postcard addressed to C.B. DeMille, Post Office Box 9, Hollywood 8, California. Or use the ballot which your Lux Toilet Soap dealer will be glad to give you. And be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Orson Welles and Rita Hayworth in Break of Hearts. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. And now, here's a reminder from Uncle Sam to the Housewives of America. Waste fats and greases from your kitchen are more urgently needed now than ever for use in the making of explosives and medicinal supplies. Every drop will contribute to saving American lives by ending this war sooner. Put your waste fats in a clean can and rush them to your butcher. He'll give you two free meat ration points besides four cents for every pound. Maytime was presented through the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of the Technicolor hit Kismet. Edgar Barrier will shortly appear in the 20th Century Fox production, Knob Hill. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. Next Wednesday evening on these same stations, same time, Hear the new Frank Sinatra program with Eileen Barton, Axel Stordahl and his orchestra, the Vins vocalists, and guest star Orson Welles. This is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Break of Hearts with Rita Hayworth and Orson Welles.